Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on, YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got another short little unboxing to share with you guys. Uh, this is probably, well, it's not a little box. <laughs> it's actually a huge box sent to me by, um, actually, I think the last person who had these uh, was uh, from Zach Stuff, so check out Zach Stuff. But this was sent by the Apex Pass Around Group, so thank you very much to the Apex Pass Around Group and the manufacturer who sent it. Uh, also, thank you so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me during this time. If you'd like to check out my Patreon and get your hands on some of these cool stickers, there is, of course, a link down in the description. Your support would mean the world to me. All right, so I am pretty sure that there are at least four knives in this box. Oh, my goodness. God bless you, Zach, and your impeccable packaging skills. Um, Zach is always really good about making sure that everything is completely and totally packaged up in a very secure way. I think that's probably going to be the best way to go about this. I, this um, this scalpel makes it super easy to get control and leverage where I need it. And people ask, but well, where do I get that? Um, I'm not actually promoting a product here. This is a custom-made uh, unboxing tool from my buddy um, Kiefer. So if you see him down in the... Um, in the uh, comments section there, give him a uh, like. Okay, yeah, this is the Willemson... Willemson series of knives. Interesting. Okay, two, three. We need to turn the exposure up. There we go. Now you guys can see what you're looking at. Okay, no, there's a, there's more. Uh, there's quite a bit more in here. Five. Oh my gosh. What on earth? This is the whole, it's like their entire line. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. This is going to be a long unboxing. Good lord. Okay. Um, well, I guess we're just going to start with this one because it's on top. So, Willemson, and then it says Copenhagen. This first one here is the Mad Dog. Alrighty. Let's pull these out here and take a look at what the heck is going on here. Um, little fixed blade here, and then it's got a sheath inside. All right, so there's our first little item here. Um, what is this made out of? Okay, is it say, come on now. This first one's in OS 8. I don't mind OS 8 at all for a nice little uh, sort of utilitarian fixed blade, so that's kind of cool. Um, I will, if I can, guys, I will link each one of these down in the description uh, so that you guys can check them out. I'm going to guess... They're not insanely expensive. I probably, man, I should probably be putting these back as I take them out because I'm going to make a mess on my table. Well, it's just, <laughs> it's just going to be how it is. Uh, next one out here, we have a folder. Okay, this is very interesting. This, is that a, what on earth is going on with this knife here? Very interesting. Okay, so this is a frame lock and carbon fiber. Look at that texturing there. What is going on with the scale? All right, let me um let me take this off real quick. Okay, it's very smooth. Yeah, that's very smooth. And this one's D2. Is that fault? Yeah, completely false shut. How's the uh, little bit of back and forth there? I wonder if we can maybe straighten that out by adjusting the pivot. Uh, and some other reviewers have had this, but... Um, right off the bat, I can say, yeah, this feels pretty good. What? What? I, I don't understand here. Oh, it's just a, uh, so this is like an overlay. Or is that, this is the liner? This is very confusing. It, it almost looks like it's a frame lock on the other side, but it's not. I'll tell you this, though. Um, I'm very happy with the materials, the weight, the balance, the size. It's very easy to manipulate. Very easy to manipulate. And uh, that little slot or groove in there. Uh, makes it easy to uh, deploy if you want to do the reverse flick or you want to do, I'd imagine, you know, the forward flick. A little bit harder to do the forward flick because of the position of the flipper tab, but the flipper tab works great. Very much like this one. Absolutely. All right, find some space for that guy. God, this is going to be a mess. Uh, next one up here. Let's do this one because it kind of looks similar. 
Yeah, it is kind of similar, but this one is a lockback. Is that the case? Or back lock, however you want to say that. Okay, yeah. We have uh, we have two different grinds on this one. Um, hollow grind up front, and or I'm sorry, initially, and then flat grind at the end. Um, this one's really nice, too. Absolutely. Little Kind of reminds me, kind of, of the Cold Steel Code 4 in profile. Um, captive pivot, looks like. Yeah, captive pivot, so that's pretty cool. Interesting that it would have the head. Is it captive? I mean, it has to be. Why would it have an adjustment head on the captive side? Okay, whatever. Um, and then, again, same thing. It kind of looks like it's a frame lock, but it's not. Um, that's just the uh, the material they chose there. Uh, is this steel? Yeah, okay, so this is steel right here. So they've managed to add some rigidity to the frame, but I imagine that's for structural integrity and then the texturing's for grip, and then they've combined it with uh, G10 probably to save weight because if this were all steel, it would be way too heavy. That's kind of an interesting idea. I'll tell you this, guys, the fit and finish is pretty good on these things. I don't know, I don't know what the price point is. Now, this one's S35VN. Okay, so, so far, that's that's crazy. So, we've got uh, OS8 on one, we had D2 on the second one, and S35VN on this guy. So, yeah, okay, so they, uh, they're working with a wide range of different steels. I'm trying to put this back on there so that while it's laying still, it's at least not going to fall off the table and do some damage to my foot there and that didn't work so we're just gonna move it <laughs> over to the side oh my gosh the sorting on these is just gonna be crazy uh the next one up here big old fixed blade wow all right i like this so far i like how it looks anyway oh my gosh i hope i'm gonna get all these pieces back together <laughs> I did not realize there were so many knives in these packages. This is awesome. Goodness. This is really cool. Uh, is that what it's called? The, how do you pronounce that word? D-E-S-P-O-T. I'm not going to try um, because I don't know. I do not know what this one's made out of, but I very much like the tumbling finish, the overall profile, like the ergonomics. It's just a straightforward, hard-use fixed blade for sure. Um, love the uh, smooth, slightly contoured G10 scales. That's a that's nice. 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 Uh, high grind there so there's lots of room i'm going to guess that's probably 187 thousandths on the spine lots of room to drop down to a nice fairly thin cutting edge this is really cool i i've been getting more and more and more into fixed blades guys I, i'm constantly looking at fixed blades online and, and while i'll i'll probably never like them as much as um as folding knives i just i like them i don't know what else to say i'm just kind of more interested in in fixed blades than i used to be Oh, my <laughs> my sorting system on my table is just chaos right now. So we have three left. And this, okay, so this is, no, it's not exactly the same. It's a smaller one. Smaller utility fixed blade. I was going to say, I don't need to pull that one out. But yeah, this one is the same idea. It's just a smaller blade. And it looks like it's probably 165 or so thousandths on the spine. So not quite as tall. But it still gets down to a nice thin cutting edge because of how it was, you know, the, the starting thickness and how it was ground. OD Green G10, and it, and it looks like a true DLC coating. Um, and then this one is Aussie. Oh, does that one say on the spine? Okay, so this one is Aussie. I wonder if the other one is also Aussie. Where did it go? Oh, right here. Let's, let's look at it again. I'm sure people are like, what? Who is this guy? People who are new is like, guy has no structure. Yeah, this one says Aus 8 as well. I know people, Aus 8, oh, there's so many better steels out there. I beat on Aus 8 on my roof using that um, uh, that uh, Tough Light, and I don't have a problem with it. You know, in a hard use setting, here's the truth. If you're really going to go out and beat on the knife, it almost doesn't matter what the heck the steel is. Well, I'm going to say that. I don't want to say it doesn't matter what the steel is. But a lot of people, you know, who like to argue the whole hard use thing and what steel is appropriate right? Um, they're going to go out and, you know, <laughs> they're going to use their knife in a setting where, well, they're, they're going to favor number one edge retention over a lot of things, right? 
Um, and I'm not, I'm not putting words in anybody's mouths. This is just what I've noticed. When you take a knife out and you really beat on it, at the end of the day, if it's, if you're really going to be using it in a hard use situation, the edge is going to be dull almost no matter what, right? So there's a lot of other things that matter. Stain resistance, obviously that matters. I would say ease of sharpening absolutely is a factor in a hard use knife. And I'll say it has those qualities, right? Now there are steels out there that are certainly what a lot of people would consider to be better for hard use. 1095, 3V, stuff like that. Sure, but you know, considering where they're probably trying to keep the price points here, it's probably not a bad choice. This is the one that I remember seeing on the image for the post in the group there. So we have, yeah, that's very much an axis lock or you know, the, the idea with the axis lock now that the patents ended, you know, of course they can use it, but that is 100% what that is. That's the uh, same idea with the uh, Omega Springs on a Benchmade knife. Really nice ergos on this guy. Ooh, this is cool. So aesthetically, I look at this and I'm like, nah, that's not something that I'm 100% interested in aesthetically, but in practice, boy, that is easy to manipulate. Nice and easy to hang on to as well. Same idea here. Uh, a lot of the structural integrity is coming from this steel part. And then they've got the texturing on this guy on the G10, which is nice. And then um, we've got a nice, I think, is it fully? Yeah. Almost fully flat ground, almost kind of like a slicer grind up here. And then, man, fantastic here, uh, the choke up position. And the jimping is actually in the right place. It's more down towards the, well, deeper down the spine, I guess. So it's right where your thumb falls naturally. This has a little thumb slot opener, so you can do the reverse flick. It has a nice little ting to it as well. <laughs> I like that. Very cool. Absolutely solid on this guy. Uh, again, fit and finish is great. Very, very interesting. These are these are very different looking than uh, a lot of the knives that I've been handling here lately. So that's cool that they're kind of doing something different. And then I guess that was the red E. And then this guy is the Tyron. God, what a mess. I'm going to spend more time cleaning this up than anything else. And this is a frame lock flipper that's utilizing, does it say the steel? This guy doesn't say the steel. I'm going to guess it's D2. Same captive pivot situation, kind of hunched down, kind of a T-Rex looking knife. The, all the, a lot of these knives have this sort of downward curvature about them. Again, very smooth. Very, very smooth. These are all running on bearings, uh, at least I think. Obviously, guys, we're going to get individual reviews on some of these. I can't... Here's the thing. I'm going to look through all of these and I'm going to decide which ones I want to review. I may not review all of them or I might review all of them. It just depends after I spend some time with them. But I can tell you guys, these are definitely well made. This one's a little bit kind of, it's kind of forcing my hand into this space right here and there's not quite enough room for it. But in the choke up position, it feels great, right? So if you're somebody who likes to use their knives in a choke up position, I think this is awesome. But you don't, you're, you're a little confined back here. Just my initial impressions. But yeah, I have never heard of this brand. These are all nice. I'm going to say almost certainly they are foreign made, um, which, you know, some people consider a factor and some people don't. But these are interesting in any case. Very, very interesting. I'm particularly very compelled by this this larger uh, fixed blade. That That's pretty sweet. I like that one a lot. They're all pretty cool. Like I said, I'll kind of decide which ones I want to review and which ones I don't. Um, but, uh, I will try and provide links if they are available. I will try and provide links for this stuff down in the description. Goodness. That was a huge unboxing. Um, that's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this or, or were at least mildly entertained by it, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody. And have a great day.